Associated Press, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Space Station, this is the Associated Press. How do you hear me? AP, hello. We have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Well, hello, everybody, and a happy new year to you all. I'm speaking to you from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida today. Uh, it looks like you're going to have to wait a little longer for your next grocery delivery. I'm wondering if you were watching the launch countdown live this morning, and how disappointed are you with the latest delay? Oh, yes, we were watching, and uh, certainly there's a little bit of disappointment because it had, uh, uh, you know, fresh fruit and those type of things that we're all interested in getting, and other things, of course. But uh, they'll get off the ground uh, here in a couple of days, and it'll all be great. I'm assuming you all have Christmas presents on board the Dragon. Um, what's the word on that? Yes, uh, we do have Christmas presents on board, but I don't know what they are because we have to wait to open them up. So I'll let you know uh, here in a few days. Well, wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm for each of you, I suppose. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the upcoming one-year mission um, by Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko. How difficult do you think it'll be for them to spend a solid year in space, and could you imagine yourselves doing that? Well, Terry and I have arrived here about, uh, well, it's probably six weeks now, uh, and uh, I can tell you I've loved every moment of it so far. I'm, I'm not necessarily uh, looking forward to go back. Um, so from my perspective right now, um, I think it's great to spend a lot of time up here. Um, of course, as time progresses, it, it might get become challenging to be away from home, and, uh, and of course, I, I, I wish them strength in that sense, and of course, I wish them to, to be able to stay healthy for, for a whole year. I think that's going to be a, an important challenge, and that's why one of the reasons why they're doing that, to see how the human body reacts to such a prolonged exposure to microgravity and the environment of space. Perhaps, uh, I think one of the biggest challenges is to... Please go ahead. Yeah, a little delay there. We keep stepping on each other a little bit. Yes, I was just going to say that I think one of the biggest challenges is maintaining a focus because every single step of every single task is very important. Everything that we do, and it's a wide variety of things that we do, and to maintain that mental focus for six months is difficult, and, uh, and to do it for an entire year, I've just got to think it's got to be even more difficult because uh, what we do is very important. You don't want to make any mistakes. Uh, mistakes are inevitable. We're human, so you want to minimize those. So maintaining that mental, mental, mental excuse me, mental focus, I think will be challenging. So maybe a couple of three-day weekends, those type of things, to let their brain kind of relax a little bit would be a smart thing. Well, thank you for for that insight. Site. We learned at uh, the, the news conference yesterday that NASA and the other station partners are uh, hoping to fly maybe 12 one-year crew members altogether to get more sample subjects um, for the life science people. Uh, What's your take on how easy it might be to rustle up uh, more crewmates uh, willing to spend a solid year in space, and, and would you guys be interested potentially down the road? The um, Doing a one-year flight is actually a pretty significant challenge for our office because of uh, the number of flight assignments that are available is pretty small, and so that takes up uh, two flight assignments. but. Uh, I'm sure that we'll have enough volunteers, that won't be a problem. Um, and of course the science folks know what science objectives they're looking for and they can uh, determine what's necessary, what we need to do um, for those flights in the future. Well, well how, in, how necessary do you think it is to, to do these one-year stints if the, if the goal is ultimately Mars? It's um. I think the the question for Mars is how we're going to get there. If we take a conventional rocket, it takes about six to nine months to get there before you're on the surface and the same amount of time to get back. And if you take a electric propulsion, if we develop a new system, you could get there in only a couple months. So the, the question for Mars is really um, how are we going to get there when it comes to the propulsion? And uh, But I want to echo what Samantha said earlier. We've been here, this is our seventh week now in space, and I'm already thinking, man, there's not enough time, there's a lot more. <laughs> that I want to do, and I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to get it done in six months, so 
Um, and I know Scott real well. He's he's going to handle it. He's going to handle it very well. And my goal on Expedition 43 is to make sure we get him off on the on the right foot for his one year flight. And uh, I, I'm sure he's going to do great. Uh, for Captain Christopher Eddy, um, my question for you specifically is: How is the space station coffee? And do you still expect to see the Italian espresso machine fly up on your mission? <laughs> well, the space station coffee is not bad. Um, it could be it could be a lot of worse. Um, so I'm I'm not complaining in any way. But uh, I am indeed looking forward to uh, to the espresso machine. And um, uh, of course, there is some some challenges with uh, resupply now, as we know. But uh, I have heard good news, and uh, there is actually still a pretty good likelihood that it will be up here before um, I leave. And so I'm really looking forward to try this uh, space espresso. Uh, well, wonderful. I'm assuming that it might be on the follow-on Dragon mission then, or might a progress take it up at this point? What, what are you hearing? Well, as far as I understand, progress is not an option, but uh, there is an open option for the next dragon, so that is uh, my hope right now. <laughs> and, and have you brought up any other s Italian food specialties to enjoy with your crew, or maybe you've already gobbled all that up for the New Year's celebration? Um, I have uh, brought up some food that was made uh, speci especially based on my preferences. I did not focus so much on uh, um, traditional Italian cuisine, but I, um, I focused on recipes that, use, um, that employ uh, very, very nutritious ingredients. I thought it was very important to bring up food that would help me to stay healthy in this very challenging environment. And so I have some pouches with the ready-made meals uh, that are just, just very, very good for your health. And just to give you an example, I have a, a quinoa salad with uh, ma mackerel, and uh, I have uh, some uh, curry chicken with uh, mushrooms, and uh, some some muesli with plenty of uh, you know really healthy nuts and fruits for breakfast. And so it's uh, it's been great to have that on board. And she, and she has shared, and it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me. Um, Two of your big experiments, Robonaut and the 3D printer. Um, how's Robonaut doing with its new legs? I haven't heard too much about it lately. And have you made anything functional yet with that 3D printer that you're you're actually using up there? Well, I'll I'll talk about Robonaut. He's actually right there, right behind me. And um, we had him out uh, probably about two weeks ago. Uh, and got them powered up, and, and we ran out of time. We weren't able to get a lot of motion out of them, but uh, that's coming in the near future. So, yes, he's been out. Um, we woke him up, but he's back hibernating again. I'll let Butch talk about the 3D printer, that which is right there. Yeah, the 3D printer was pretty amazing. Uh, watched uh, some items print out. They made a uh, what I called a, a honey jar. And just a, a cap and the, and the jar itself fit together perfectly, though they printed separately, which I thought was very intriguing, very interesting. Of course, they wouldn't let me put honey in it because they have to take it back to earth and assess how it all came out. Uh, also, a uh, ratchet wrench. We made a ratchet wrench. Of course, again, they wouldn't let me use it, though I wanted to, uh, because they'll have to send it back and, uh, like I said, uh, assess it. So anyway, it's pretty, pretty intriguing, pretty neat, pretty neat science. Well, I, I'm wondering if you could share your New, Year re, New Year's resolutions um, from space. Um, what are they? And, and how was your New Year's Eve celebration, I should say? How was ringing in the New Year? New Year's was great. Going around the Earth 16 times, we got to cross, you know, midnight somewhere on Earth 16 times. That was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, we were almost always over the ocean, so we didn't get a chance to look and see if we could see fireworks, you know, over London or Washington or New York or Moscow or any place like that, but it was a lot of fun. So I have resolved to spend more time on the ceiling this year. In 2014, I spent way too much time on the floor, so I'm going to try and get up there on the ceiling. That's one of my New Year's resolutions. Yeah, I guess my uh, New Year's resolution is to start doing more and more video here on board of the space station, just to, to document the, the amazing life and work that we do up here a little bit more. And um, as far as our New Year celebrations go, uh, <laughs> I'd like to mention that we actually danced. I, di I, didn't, I didn't quite know if it would be possible to dance in, in weightlessness, but uh, we gave it a try. It was fun. I, I'm not sure that it looked like dancing from the outside, but uh, we felt like we were dancing, and so that's our, our story, and we're sticking to it. 
Well, well. Um, I didn't make any New Year's resolutions, but I like Terry, so I'm going to spend some time on the ceiling. <laughs> well, listen, all uh, all of you, all all three and all six of you, um, Godspeed on your travels and and have a wonderful New Year. Buon anno uh, to uh, Signora Cristoforetti. Thank you very much, and Happy New Year. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Associated Press portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KGO-TV. Space Station, this is KGO. How do you hear me? Loud and clear. How do you hear us? Great. Thank you. Good. Great. Good morning. Thank you for making time for us. This is San Francisco calling. Um, can, can you tell me about today's launch and how you guys feel about it? Or it didn't launch. That's right. We were we were actually watching Mission Control in Houston was able to send up some live video and we knew the weather was a little bit iffy today, so it wasn't a big surprise. Uh, we'll just wait a few days and, and they'll launch when they're ready to go. Um, we're definitely looking forward to the cargo that SpaceX 5 will be bringing up to us. Um, personally, we all have food and some Christmas presents on there that we're looking forward to, but more importantly, there's some good science and some equipment that we'll need for future spacewalks on there. So it's an important resupply mission, just like they're all very important resupply missions to the space station. Other than the Christmas presents from your loved ones, what's the one thing that you really looking forward to personally on the supplies that you want? Well, I, I hate to, I, I'll be honest and I'll just tell you, you know, uh, when you come up here, your tastes change a little bit. A lot of people don't, probably don't know that, but you like spicy food and, and there's not a lot of spicy. We ran out of condiments about a month and a half ago. So I'm looking forward to getting some yellow mustard and make this food just a little more tasty. <laughs> Can you talk about the importance of this rocket, this particular one, and the return of it? I think you're referring to the, they're going to try to land on a barge, which will be pretty amazing. And um, the real benefit there is an economic one. If you can reuse the boosters, I think that's going to reduce the cost of launching to space, which of course is important. It's the biggest limiting factor we have in getting to space is the cost. and so. If they're successful in being able to reuse the first stage booster, that'll definitely help. Can you talk about as an astronaut as far as reusing this equipment and traveling? Well, I think the greatest example is the space shuttle, which we just retired, a, you know, just a couple of years ago. Uh, the reusable, uh, as we reused it, to gosh, 135 flights we did on, on the space shuttle with reusable engines, reusable avionics, everything. Of course, which brought the cost down substantially over what it would cost to build a new one every time. So, obviously, there's the, there's the greatest example right there. And um, for our viewers here the Bay Area in San Francisco, there's some kids in Oakland, I believe, that have experiments on this cargo. Talk about the experience, experiments that are going to you, and how do you communicate with these people, these young kids? I think one of you likes to Twitter. Uh, I think one of you likes to Twitter. <laughs> No, we are, uh, of course, looking forward to the science that is coming up. Um, I am, uh, in particular, looking forward, of course, as an uh, ESA astronaut to some uh, ESA and uh, ASI Italian Space Agency experiments that are coming up on uh, a Dragon, uh, which include, uh, for example, uh, airway monitoring or triple looks or some hardware that was actually lost on the unfortunate mishap earlier or last year and that is being replaced um, for experiments studying uh, Venus. Uh, uh, blood circulation and and sleep and uh, as far as uh, doing stuff with kids that's of course uh, always very exciting I actually look forward to uh, in a couple of weeks I believe or even less uh, with Yelena my uh, Russian crewmate 
We're going to be supporting the um, finals of the competition Zero Robotics up here. So we have these uh, three spheres that actually can be controlled inside the cabin. And we will run software developed by students throughout the world. And they will actually compete here on board. We will run that software, and those spheres will fly in the Japanese modules. And uh, we'll see who wins. So that's, of course, very exciting. And uh, do you communicate with them via Twitter? Uh, we do, actually. We all um, use Twitter. I'm Astro Terry. She's Astro Samantha. And uh, Butch is Astro Butch. And that's probably one of the best ways to communicate with folks. We, we love sending out the pictures that we take. The views here are just unbelievable. Sometimes we'll post pictures of us inside doing the things that astronauts do on a daily basis. It's a really easy way for the public to see what we do and uh, to share in the adventure that we're having in, in a small way or actually in a big way. It's a lot of fun to do that. Is there any other form of communications you have? No. Well, I, I, um, I make an effort to write a daily um, a logbook, so a short account of uh, what happened during the day and uh, my perspective, uh, of course, the, the stuff that we do in terms of science and maintenance, but also just my observations in terms of adapting to the life on the space station and, and little things that surprise me. Um, or just, you know, how we celebrated Christmas Eve, for example. Um, so I, I, I try to do that, and uh, it's my way to try and share as much as possible of this amazing experience that I am leading. And Samantha, we also uh, have, uh, have Instagram of, is used, and the NASA websites are used. So there's other ways besides just Twitter. Instagram, the NASA.gov website, um, like Samantha said, Google, so there's other things. But here she is for your question. Um, uh, Samantha, it sounds like you've been schooled in France, German, it Italian, Italy. Um, I think you speak Chinese as well. Do you have any messages to say to the Bay Area where you have a diverse community here? Maybe say it in a different language, like greetings from in different languages. <laughs> Of course, I, I do have to say I don't really speak Chinese. I have only started to learn it, and it's my big project from when, for a, when I get back to, to the planet. But uh, yeah, I, I've, I've been in San Francisco in the Bay Area. I actually have many friends there. Um, it's a city I, I love. I always enjoy visiting. So, uh, ciao e tanti auguri a San Francisco. Alles Gute und uh, guten Tag aus dem Weltraum nach San Francisco. And uh, bonjour San Francisco. C'est très sympa de vous parler aujourd'hui. And fellas, do you have any greetings you want to say from outer space? Well, yeah, I'd like to say um, San Francisco is one of my favorite places in America. Actually, Butch and I both learned how to land the space shuttle there at NASA Ames. And um, I've got 15 years of great memories of going out there uh, for NASA. and. I miss it, and uh, I'd love to have an In-N-Out burger right now, too. That's one of the main things I miss from San Francisco. So uh, it, that's definitely on our, on our to-do list after we get back to Earth. I'm sorry, was that Butch or is that Terry that I was speaking to? Yeah, that was Terry. Um, I have one minute for this interview. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Before we wrap anything up. Thanks, Peter. Well, we do we do appreciate the support of all uh, Americans uh, across the nation, and actually everyone across the globe is this international cooperation. So it's uh, it's a huge effort, and it's involving hundreds of thousands of people around the globe. And uh, to all, thanks to all each and every one of you for your efforts and the passion for human spaceflight. It's making a difference, I think, in uh, in our world. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you all. So long, San Francisco. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event.